All right, so it's noon, and I'm going to go ahead and get started, and welcome to the power of belonging. And one of the things that, um, that I'd like to say about belonging, particularly now, is that we've really struggled, I think, this year in terms of um, what it means to create a sense of belonging, and how do we belong this year? Welcome from Washington, D.C., um, and, and how we belong this year. So mm -hmm. just to give you a little background about who we are as we go into this, um, we are Lindsay's Conscious Business. And people often ask us, what does Lindsay's mean? And Lindsay's actually means keen insights in Latin. And what we like to think of is that we want to help um, people and organization get the analytics, data analytics, and the emotional insights, emotional intelligence insights to help them reimagine, reinvent, and revolutionize themselves themselves as leaders, the organization, the culture, developing other leaders, and of course that means improved performance or accelerated business results. Um, the, the next thing that uh, I often look at this slide and think, wow, I'm really quite old. I've been in the business more than 30 years along with my other partners, uh, Ms. Cynthia Medaglia and F. Barry Robertson. We are sort of a family-owned business as Cindy is my sister and uh, Barry is my husband. And we've been working with companies around the world, uh, working on leadership, culture, emotional intelligence, helping people to gain the insights they need, you know, to improve their lives and to improve the lives of their, their employees. So let's just jump into this. What is belonging? You know, inclusion, connection, and belonging. They are human needs human needs. And this is something that's really been tested this year, the, the sense of inclusion and connection, because to create a sense of belonging is a human thing to do as a leader. And it's a smart thing to do as a, as a leader. But, you know, when, when we meet human needs, when we are able to understand people's human needs, this is how we actually improve performance because we are now creating a heartfelt connection with each other. So I decided to do this webinar a little bit differently than what I've done in the past, is I really looked at all of your questions that you sent beforehand. And these are some of the questions you have had. How do I create a sense of connection and inclusion and belonging when there's such division in my family, with politics, in my life, when I can't actually be connected. I and mean, you see the picture of the two people separated. And sometimes people, right now, people are making very difficult decisions around their lives and what they're going to do for the holidays or they've already made difficult decisions and other people have made other choices, which then gets back to this division of, as you see people in the middle, you have maskers and you have non-maskers and you have one side of the political equation and the other side of the political equation and people are really feeling this division because it's impacting our values so incredibly deeply. Um, and, and for some of us, it's surprising that, wow, my best friend, I didn't know they thought that way. So how do I bridge this gap? And for many people, as we're finding as we work with uh, um, the, uh, various companies, you know, they're just people in leadership roles. They're just people who are you know, managing others. There's just people who are individual contributors. These are big, big questions. And so, and then at work, we have, you know, the space between people and the lack of touch. And um, even going to the beach now, you see these lines. Actually, I quite like that because then you get some more space between people instead of getting so crowded. But anyway, you know, that this is something we've not seen. And I've certainly not seen this in my lifetime. And then once again, we are on Zoom and people are getting bored with Zoom. I don't want people coming into my house via the video. Um, and so I'm gonna actually talk about these because it's, these are not easy questions. And um, I sort of laughed that it was like, wow, that's a big question. How do I create connection and belonging when I know people in my, my family and in, in my immediate circle, we are so on different sides on a number of different things. And so how do I do that? So with inclusion, connection, and belonging, the thing is, is where do you start? And so when I was looking at the questions that you sent, it was, there's two areas that you were asking about, home, family, and friends. 
and then work team and community. So I want to start with home, family, and friends. So with home, family, and friends, you have to want to choose to heal the divide. You've got to make a choice. Um, I've been talking with a lot of people who said, said things like this, and it's more about friends that they say this. It's like, wow, I can't believe that that person really thinks that way or believes that way. Whereas family, particularly as it relates to politics, it was like, oh, yeah, well, Uncle Joe or Aunt Sue or whatever, they always thought that way. And so we learned how to deal with that difference. But now the difference that we, people are feeling, people are feeling that it's going to impact their life. People are afraid of the anger and the divisiveness that's out there. Um, we've not, I've not been in a time where I've seen, of course, Facebook didn't exist when I was younger, where people are saying, I'm willing to fight for what I believe. And that creates a lot of fear. And um, I actually asked if, um, somebody I know, I'm like, so you would really be willing to take out a gun because we are on different sides and shoot me. And the answer, of course, was, well, no. But yet, what's out there, so we take out our metaphorical guns and, we are, and we've been shooting each other. So how do we heal this divide within our friends and family when that's what it feels like? Like there is no way to bridge this chasm. You know, and in the end, the person that obviously I felt safe enough to ask such a question, it's a provocative question, is that when we have to choose to decide and decide that this is something we want to bridge, that we want to sort of set down that armor and figure out what is really um, important to us. And that takes time. And some of us aren't ready to give that time just yet. It takes time to find that common ground again. And when I ask that question, I'm like, what is it? Uh, and I'll just use the name Bob. I'm like, Bob, what is it that you're really looking for? And of course, what he was saying, well, you know, I think that if the reason why I believe this is I feel like if, if I don't speak up in this way, we're going to lose our democracy. And I said, well, I feel the same way too. And, it's, and it was sort of like, well, how can you think that way? Well, that's now we start to find common ground, right? Um, it, it's kind of funny that uh, before when I traveled a lot, um, I would go, I would often pass through the Charlotte airport. Any of you go through the Charlotte airport before? Um, if you go into the American lounge and I, you know, I study people, I like to understand how they think. And in the American lounge, they had two 60 inch screen TVs. And this was long before COVID. And so I would, and one, one TV had Fox and one TV had CNN. And so I would actually put my clock on if I had the amount of time that um, if I had 15 minutes or if I had 30 minutes, I would spend 15 minutes at one TV, 15 minutes at the next TV. And I really wasn't caring about what was on the television. I wanted to hear what people said. And would I believe and would, would that, in, you know, what was being said to me from whatever perspective I was listening to, would that impact how I thought? And then I would go to the other side and I would do the same thing. That's taking the time. And so what was I doing? This is an old Covey saying, seek first to understand, then to be understood. But what, what happens most times, and we get into these fights with our families, is we come in with our guns blazing, right? So you want to be able to take the time. You want to be able to choose, because these are the people that you cared about, whether they were maskers or non-maskers before there was such a thing to create a divide. And yet these things are dividing us. The second thing that you wanna be able to do besides choose and decide and create the time is to act with compassion and not fear and anger and then explore with curiosity. And so uh, I had a funny um, conversation the other day with one of my coworkers who is sitting here listening and he, he used some words and he was rattling off some things. And I'm like, I don't understand. I, no, I still don't understand. <laughs> like, no, really? Can you explain that? Because I don't get it. But, and my goal was to come out of questioning and curiosity because I, I you know, he saw the world in one way and I, I use different language in terms of how I saw the world. 
And when he was able to explain um, exactly what he meant, I was like, ah, now I get it. And now once again, I found common ground with, um, with my partner at work. And when you go in with a, with a feeling of curiosity, rather than fear and anger is, you know, and here's how fear and anger sounds like, well, how can you think like that? I can't believe you think that way. You're so stupid for, I actually had um, somebody in my family say to me, I can't, you're so, you're so stupid for thinking like that. And I'm like, really? Wow. <laughs> You know, and I could have come back and, you know, punched back. But what good would that have done? And so then I'd move into curiosity. So why are you saying that? What is it that that I'm saying that you feel is stupid? And and I go into what I would call a, an interviewer mode or a, a journalistic mode, because I want to seek first to understand, because if I can do that, if I am able to understand where people are, then people can come over into my world. And then lastly, what you wanna do is acknowledge the fractures that are already there and dig, dig deeper. And what I mean by dig deeper is this, is that when you know, know what the fractures are, whether that is, you know, in business, you would call that silos. So once you understand what those silos are or what, what's keeping people in those different spaces, what you want to do is be able to dig and explore deeper. This is why curiosity is so important. Um, it, you want to understand uh, what is the belief structure that people are having and thinking that allows them to make the conclusion that they're making. And then you want to explore your own belief structure and what you are thinking and feeling at, so that you understand what's driving your decision, okay? And when you do that together, again, when we're talking about home and family, when you do that together, because generally speaking, if you love these people, you're, it, it might sound, feel a bit dodgy. It might feel a bit, you know, I call it eh, eh, eh kind of stuff. But if the, if the caring is there, then you're willing to explore and you're willing to go into that. And I've, I have yet to find, when I'm wor whether I'm working with a team where I have two people that are at odds with each other, or even family members who are at odds together, is that when I peel back those layers and trying to figure out, well, what are the belief structures that are in place that cause each person to think and feel and behave the way that they do, once we're able to peel that back, then I often find that they're looking for common ground. And so when, when I look at this division that, that we see, almost everyone wants safety. They want security. Now we have different ideas about how to get there, but basic underlying need for inclusion, belonging, and um, connection is really the security and safety. And, and when we get there, and so this friend I was talking about, I'm like, okay, so you think this way and I think that way. Do you really? And well, no. And I'm like, well, me neither. So we need to find. Maybe we need to find a middle way, you know, and that's what they say in Taoism, it's the middle way. And I was like, okay, now we can, he we can start to heal that divide. Um, and, I, and I also then noticed Facebook's posting became a little bit less, um, how can I say, uh, full of fireworks. Uh, and, and then sometimes it was, it's just kind of fun to throw some fireworks back. But, the, but we tapped into that underlying both our needs and the caring that we had in order to heal the divide. Um, so I know it's a lot to cover and I'm happy to, my email will be at the end of this. If you would like some more time, please email me because this is a, this is a big um, topic and this tugs at people's hearts because we're talking about deep values, um, not just uh, I'm right and you're wrong. We're talking about very deep values that are causing us to have a lot of fear. And when we begin to peel back that, the layer of that onion and get to that source and, and understand what's actually going on, fear, safety, psychological safety, um, the need to be connected, particularly since we are in social distancing. Now you have the, the ingredients for healing the divide. So then with connection, inclusion, and belonging, again, where do you start? I'm going to quickly move into team, and I'm going to give you some um, examples that we've used. I love the question that came in uh, uh, when you guys signed up. It's like, okay, what do you do with Zoom fatigue? And 
And, you know, it's some of the things that you do seem so cheesy. Um, you know, when you're trying to have some fun and you can only drink so much coffee and have so many margaritas kind of thing. Um, and so I want to try and answer that for, for you in terms of what we've done with our clients that we are either Zooming with uh, or doing remote um, teamwork with. And so looking at this, when you um, take, take a look at, we have social distancing at work. Uh, one of my clients is a hospital and I go in and, you know, we're, we're always making sure we stay distant so that we create um, space. And then many of my days look just like this one in the middle. And then finally, um, the, the last bit uh, with this woman, you can see she's kind of bored and I'm sure we all do. And then we wish, we wish for the good old days of being able to just do a conference call when they don't, you don't have to be dressed from the waist up. And um, so in order to, what you want to do is you, in order to create this inclusion, connection and belonging and create the team and community, there's a number of things that you can do and you can do immediately. The very first thing is having heart to heart, real conversations. Whether you are doing that by Zoom or WebEx or GoToMeeting or Google Hangouts, whatever it is, is having heart-to-heart -heart real conversations. And so the next question people ask me is, well, then how do you do that when we're all distant, when we're so distant from each other and we haven't seen each other in six months, you know, let's say at work? The other thing is, and I'll answer that question, the other thing is, is finding ways to have a good belly laugh. Um, and because there's nothing that brings that bring uh, there's nothing better that brings energy up with a group than having heart to heart conversations and having good laughter and not as some as the person put it some che of the cheesy stuff although cheesy can be kind of fun too. So when I look at what do I do to help teams create this, the first thing I've learned and and teams are now doing that I work with is whatever you want to do that's really focused on inclusion, connection, and belonging is do it within work hours. Before, when we would go out and have a drink after work, that was a choice to be social after work, to go and hang out with each other, and to have those laughs, and to blow off the day, and to have this, and blow off the steam. Now, because we are at home, and, you know, just yesterday, we were, um, having a meeting and we were joking around that the CEO kept showing up for one of our coworkers. Well, the CEO is about um, a year and a half years, uh, years old. And so the CEO was demanding her time. And so our coworker, of course, had to uh, attend to her daughter. Um, but if you really want to have inclusion, connection and belonging, we recommend you take the time during work hours, create a team retreat during work hours, for example, and which we've done with, with our groups as well. And then you invite people uh, to, to, to join, bring people together, be the one who brings people together, not at four o'clock on a Friday, but potentially it could be at three o'clock on a Friday to say, look, we wanna get together. We wanna find out how you're doing. We just wanna get a sense. And I'm gonna show you some, give you some questions that you can ask to get this kind of stuff going. And then let's just hang out with each other. And you know, the, the attire is everybody has to wear slippers if we're gonna be doing it via Zoom. And then have a, uh, a slipper contest, if you will. You'd be amazed, even though that sounds cheesy, how well that works. And then you've got to create the connection. And it's harder to create the connection. Like I said, in a moment, I'm gonna share with you some of the questions we've asked that's created heart to heart as well as created laughter. It, it, because what you miss by not being together at an office is you miss those spontaneous conversations at the water cooler or you miss the spontaneous let's go to lunch together. So how do you do that so that we can reconnect and really feel like we're connected even if we haven't seen each other in six months, you know, in person. When we start to, uh, point number three, first, you know, you want to take the time during work hours, uh, invite people, ask questions that will allow you to create connection. That's when you begin to find commonality. And, and it's not just about all business. I actually find that when you mix the businessy with the personal, 
um, and there are certain questions I'll give you in a moment, that actually helps generate more energy to help with more uh, brainstorming, that helps with more problem solving. And because people then feel like, wow, we're all in this together when we're able to feel connected and we're all suffering through the same um, uh, sorts of things that happen when we're, when we're working from home. The last thing is, is valuing differences. Again, when we're separated and we're not able to reach out and touch somebody, it's so much easier to be on opposite sides of the fence. You know, and the silos can get, actually get stronger. The interesting thing is, is this year what I've seen is those, that um, leaders that actually focused on bringing the teams together, their teams together, and focused on, hey, let's just hang out within work hours on the, on the assessments that we do, we've actually seen belonging, inclusion, and connection go up like 50 basis points, in some cases, 100 basis points, because they took the time to focus on it, and they asked real questions uh, to get people talking in a connected way. So what kinds of questions? So how do you start a real conversation? First, take time to invite this is one that with team sessions that we've done quite a bit of, we've asked people what's been the most important change during this time of separation that, that's happened for you that you will likely keep once, you know, you know social distancing is, is, a little, is um, freeing us up. It's really interesting because this brings out the heart. The, the words that I hear more than any other words is this. The most important change is because I'm working from home, I saw my kid take their first walk. I was able to help my son solve a math problem. I was able to help my kid learn how to throw a baseball. And those kinds of things, because even though there's a longing to get back to work, that kind of deep, you know, it's in the gut, right? This is, this is what's important to me. And so a lot of my clients are saying one of the best things that's happened to them is the separation because they became closer to their family. And they were able to witness things that they would not have witnessed if they had been running around the way they did, you know, running out the door in the morning, running back, getting the kids off to school, coming back, putting dinner on the table. And what they really appreciate, the most important change for a lot of the people when we ask this question is time. The time to be and to be with their family and to talk. And, you know, many of them are saying, you know, when we get back to whatever normal the next normal is, this is something I want to keep. And then, of course, it depends on your group. What's been the most heartbreaking choice that you've had to make during this time? You know, for me, we actually went and visit our, we bought our, we bought a trailer last year to camp. We actually did our Christmas trip so that we could be outside. They live in Colorado. Most of my kids and grandkids live in Colorado. And it's a heartbreaking choice that we're not going to be there at Christmas. Now, conversely, my granddaughter turned 10 uh, this past week and I normally like to take her shopping. And so we got online via FaceTime, and we went to five different stores together, not quite the same, but I learned that she liked the socks that go over the knees. I didn't even know those were back in style. And yes, I would love to have been there. It wasn't really heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking that I won't be able to be there in person and do the normal Christmas stuff. But at the same time, I found a way, we found a way where we could keep some of the traditions, and then we told them we would be back in the spring. So when you ask this of a question and, and you have the time, so let's say you get your group together for a mini team session for like three hours. If you have eight people in the room, this will take, this alone will take an hour automatically. And people's hearts open up. So then when you go into problem solving, so how do we help our people who are dealing with the same thing? And now we've also got to get our business done, business as usual. So how do we help people who are feeling the same as we do? And how do we solve the problem as business as usual? I hope this makes sense. I hope it helps. So in a world of algorithms, hashtags, and followers, know the importance of human connection. That's what we're talking about here. Brainstorming. Laughter is 
one of the best things for brainstorming. So another thing is, if you're really looking to bring up the energy in a different way, asking people what's the silliest thing, the most idiotic thing that you've done that makes you laugh when you think about it. Once again this morning, because, you know, I'm still sort of not used to working at home. Um, it, I can never seem to find my phone anymore because I, I go all over the house and I'm not used to doing that and it gets dropped. And when I think about it, I'm like, holy cow, you know, you're losing your mind. Um, but what are some of the things? And we've heard some great stories from our clients about some of the silliest things that have happened, particularly kid related stories um, when they come into the room. Slipper com uh, competition. Uh, you know, people we see we see the commercials where people stand up and oops, they're still in their pajamas. And um, so having you know, that creates a real conversation. You know, who really has their pajamas on right now? And um, people and you make a contest out of it. And I will share with you something that some of my clients really loved um, and really they made fun of me. Uh, we have maskers and non-maskers in my family. My husband and I are maskers. And we wanted to be able to hug our grandchildren. We weren't gonna not hug our grandchildren. So this is what, they call me Lola. This is what I bought off of Etsy. Oops, I don't have it here. No, actually I bought a hood. Um, I bought a hood that it's like a hoodie, but it has a, a clear face mask in front of it. And when I posted that to my Facebook and to LinkedIn, the comments that I got around how silly or wow, you look like Darth Vader, or isn't it hot underneath there? And it just created such fun energy. And when um, I had that on when I was visiting my grandkids and uh, giving them hugs, and they were saying, oh, you look so silly, Lola. That's what they, Lola is grandma in Tagalog. And I said, yeah, but this way I get to hug you. And of course, then they, you know, because they're young, they run around, you have to chase them. For them, it really wasn't anything different. And for us, and my, my uh, husband, it really wasn't anything different. And so we've done things like the most unusual masks, uh, mask contests when we're having team sessions. Bring your, the most important thing with when you're wanting to create inclusion, connection and belonging is first make the decision that you want to do this, whether it's family or at work, make the choice to do it, take the time, and then ask some of these facilitate the connection by asking these kinds of questions and allowing people to enter that space. And if you have any questions, let me know. So I'm, I'd like to challenge, issue you a challenge and an invitation. So between now and your end, the challenge, who can you invite? Who can you invite to reach your inner circle to a team session, to a lunch, maybe to speak up. Maybe it's someone in your family where you've been on opposite sides of the fence and this is somebody you deeply care about and, and have struggled. Who can you invite so that you can get that first step of inclusion and connection to create belonging? And the second thing I'd like to do is invite you Every month we do these 30 minute webinars. We try, we like to keep them short, but sign up for our monthly um, newsletter. And of course, January will likely be, I haven't picked the topic yet, but uh, it will likely be on something about endings. The title came to me this morning, endings, transitions, and new beginnings. How do we turn the page and move forward? So thank you for attending. And with that, um, I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Ramadan, or whatever it is that you celebrate. I'll go with my um, Seinfeld day, days, you know, Happy Festivus kind of thing. And um, I hope you'll come see us in the new year. And again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions at, to uh, Lindsay's uh, www.lcbgroup.com and we will see you in the new year unless you have some questions. And so I want to say thank you. Go out and create more belonging and connection and have a great day.